Steve back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Havoc OS over here because it's been a long time since I did a video on the Havoc OS as far as I remember and this is the latest version version 4.4 and official build again based on Android 11 and 20th April 2021 build and this build I have flashed over here includes the G apps but there is also one more build that does not include G apps and if you want to clean flash this from just check out the card right there or you can check out the description as well and you can see this is based on me why vendor has lost fod or lineage os fod i guess right now let me show you the about section this is how it looks like on top we have the havoc os logo and we also have the android version over here as android 11 of course as you are noticing and the havoc os version again is 4.4 we have the security patch of latest april 5th 2021 we have the perf g kernel as the stock kernel sl linux status is enforcing build date again 22nd april over here it says and here is the build number now inside system panel we still do not have any system updater which might be kind of a disappointment for you guys but i would say just like update it manually if you are on the previous build of the same rom and you can check out that card over there to update manually and here in the front camera settings we also have the front camera led customization then we have the front camera raise dialog and the front camera sound effects are there and these many sounds that you get and also we have the calibration option over here even though this rom is based on miui vendor we get all of these features so this is great let me go back we have the gboard over here as the default keyboard on this gapps included build now let me show you the home screen well this is how it looks like and if you go into the about this is the shady launcher present by default and if you look at the settings in the gestures we do have the double tap to sleep swipe down for notifications swipe down to clear all and stuff and in the grid option we have all these dock icon column and row number settings and in the icons we also have the icon pack changing option icon size changing option then the notification dots and then add app icons to the home screen let me go back in the app drawer we have the hidden apps then the icon labels portrait or landscape and we have the multi-line labels and also the suggestions disabling option is there let me go back we have the home screen settings here we have the google feed then the top gradient icon labels and always center wallpaper and stuff like that let me go back so this is a very cool launcher and yes it is force closing because like I just went back from the settings, it happens. And here, let me show you, there is double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. Talking about the finger scanner speed, as you can see, this is how it works. And let me show you one more time from the always on display. Yes, the finger scanner is very snappy, no issues whatsoever, even from the always on display or even from the lock screen, if you're noticing. Let me show you one more time. As you can see, even from the lock screen, the finger scanner speed is very fast and no issues that I have had. On the fingerprint icon itself, it does this kind of animation, but yes, I could not find the option to actually see the like actual fingerprint animation over here. Those things are just simply missing. Launcher, we have the Google's Discover page to the left. Swiping down anywhere in the home screen gets you to the quick settings or the notification panel. And swiping up gets you to the app drawer. You can also search for any particular apps and the widgets and stuff in the home screen are working fine. Now talking about the quick setting panel, this is how it looks like and you can edit and add multiple toggles from here. And I have already added a couple of them, but you can also add the reading mode and stuff. And these mini options are there if you're noticing. We have the night light and stuff. They are working super fine, no issues. And we have the dark theme, then the like screen recorder. With that, you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time. So those things are there. And we also have the heads up disabling option, hotspot, then the do not disturb, always on display. And also we have the FPS info too. So if you enable this, as you can see, FPS is showing up on the top left. Now we also have the DC dimming feature over here. So if you want to enable that, as this is a MIUI vendor based ROM, DC dimming is there and it is working flawlessly. Talking about faulty calling and stuff, yes, they are working flawlessly, but there is no call recording option over here, which might be a bummer for some. But yes, the stock dialer here is the pixel dialer. So yeah, faulty calling and VO Wi-Fi both works fine here. Now inside configuration center, of course, we have all the customizations. Let me show you one by one. Inside series bar, we have the clock customization. And brightness control is there. So you can just swipe on the status bar to adjust the brightness as you can see. So this is a very handy feature for me at least and I use it on daily basis. Now double tap to sleep on the status bar is also there. Then the network speed carrier label customizations are there. Then we have the battery icon style. We have the portrait circle text etc. No big dotted circle or something. And we have the battery percentage inside the icon or next to the icon option. Battery bar you can enable and inside status bar icons we have the headset bluetooth etc icons from here. Then we have the notification count option. Next we have the quick pull down and stuff in the quick setting panel settings and we have the battery estimates and there is the tint tiles option and we have the column and row number customization and we have the tile title disabling option and we have edit icon and stuff 
Then if you go into the lock screen, we have the double tap to sleep. Then we have the screen of FOD. Then we have the quick settings and the charging info and that's it. And it is kind of weird that we do not get any more kind of fingerprint kind of customization over here. But yeah, that's how it is. And there is no always unlock with the fingerprint scanner option or the force fingerprint unlock option is just missing. Let me go back. We have the ambient display. Here we have the battery level always on and stuff. Then if you scroll down, we have the always on displays brightness force values options. Now you can also schedule the always on over here like the always on display if you want to. And let me go back. We have the buttons and navigations here. We have the system navigation gestures. And from here, if you go into the settings, we have the gesture bar length customization. Then inside additional settings, we also have the extended swipe action. So you can set any custom action from here. But let me tell you, you can't like actually increase the thickness of this build bar. And this is the thickness that you get by default. Two button and three button navigation is also there. Then we have the swap keys if you're using two or three na button navigation. In the gestures, we have the quickly open camera, then the system navigations again. Then we have the prevent ringing and inside power menu we do have the advanced reboot. Let me show you this is how the power menu looks like and from here you can enable any smart home controls and if you tap restart as you can see when you have advanced reboot enabled you can directly reboot to recovery or fast boot from this menu. Now here we have the quick torch option so long pressing the power button will toggle the torch and skip music track and swipe to screenshot is there and in this as you can see there is share edit and delete option but I cannot simply find the long screenshot option over here which could be a bummer for some. In the notification panel, we have the edge lighting, then the heads up disabling option, kill app button and stuff. Let me go back. We have the battery settings here. We have suspend action, block sensors and stuff. Then we have the media options here. We have music, visualization, media artwork and the blur level and stuff. In the misc settings, we have the gaming mode, wake device when plugged in and the charging animation options is there. We can enable or disable them as you're liking. And in the about section of Havoc OS customization, we have all the developers name and we have the telegram group discord and you can donate to the Havoc OS team. Now let me go into the battery settings. Here is how it looks like. And if you tap here, you will see the full battery usage. Now talking about the battery life, I would say the battery life is good enough. You can get like about six to seven hours of screen on time easily on this ROM. And I would say the battery life is just great. And 18 watt and 33 watt fast charging both are working fine here. No issues whatsoever. And here we also have the thermal profile changing option if you want to change some apps thermal profiles. And we have battery saver, adaptive battery. Here you see the screen on time and stuff. But I'm really disappointed to see that there is no option to see the battery temperature and stuff over here. Now let me jump into the display settings here. We have the brightness level, then the dark theme. And when you enable the dark theme, as you can see, you can change the like themes over here. I have changed it to Raven Black, but you have all these options. Nightlight option is there. You can change the intensity. Then we have the auto brightness changing option and inside styles and wallpapers. This is the style that you get. And you can also like add just the theme over here with the fonts then the icons and then we have all the accent colors you can create any custom theme from here so a lot of accent colors are there inside clocks you get these many clocks as you can see we have this s funny one and the fluid one then the id and stuff so yeah these many lock screen clock that you get and we have the rotation settings colors are set to boosted by default and we have the lock screen settings here we have the always show time and info double tap to wake is there prevent accidental wake up is there then the anti flicker mode is also there let me go back we have the sound settings over here and media call etc volume options are there this is how the volume panel looks like and you can expand it just like this vibration and haptics you can control the ringtone vibration pattern then the in call vibrations and touch vibration over here if you scroll down we have the volume steps then the dial pad tone screen locking sound charging sound etc disable option clear speaker is also there as you can see then we have the me audio direct separately and here as you can see there are plethora of options for the me audio direct and the sound quality with the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is superb no issues whatsoever that i have faced and hi-fi audio option is also there now inside security if you go into the screen unlock settings there is the quick unlock then the scramble layout lock after timeout over here power button instantly locks you can enable or disable that but again, there is no option to change the fingerprint icons over here. I'm not really sure why, but that's how it is. And then we have the face unlock option. And this is how the setting up wizard looks like. Let's click next and it says how to set up face unlock. Well, okay, so let's just try that and looks good over here. It says so right now, let's just double tap over here to make the phone sleep. And right now from the always on display, I'll just double tap. Do you want to raise the front facing camera? Yes. So every time I double tap, it shows this kind of warning. I'll just tap yes. And as you can see, I'm not really sure if the face unlock is working. Okay, so I have to swipe up, I guess, from the lock screen. Let me show you one more time. From here, if I tap yes, it doesn't do anything until and unless I swipe up on the lock screen. So that's how it is. Maybe you will just be able to like turn off this notification. Then it will be fine for you. And yeah, 
If I swipe up, the face unlock is working super fine. Now, of course, there is an app lock and this is how it looks like. You can lock any particular apps from here by just clicking on this lock icons. And I have locked a couple of apps over here. And you can also change the timeout for them from here or you can search for any particular app over here which will appear whenever you search for the name of the app and you can lock it then and you can hide the notification from here and let me show you actually i have this telegram app locked and this is how the interface looks like this like font and stuff looks very cool and i can like tap the finger bit scanner with my assigned finger it will unlock i can also use the face unlock also use the pin so let me just tap here and as you can see it has unlocked so the app lock is perfectly fine, no issues whatsoever. And it does not show me the fingerprint icon here and there every time I open some apps or something. So that bug is not there and the app lock is working just perfectly fine. Since this is a MIUI vendor based ROM, you should not be worried about your DRM certification, but I have already broken my certificate of DRM like previously. So that's the reason why it shows L3 for me. But if your DRM certification is intact and it shows L1 for you right now, it will show L1 for you even in this ROM. So do not worry about that. And as you can see, it passes the safety net test right out of the box. So that means you can use banking apps like Google Pay or any other banking apps over here without any issues. By the way, this is how the recent panel looks like. And you can take a screenshot from here, clear all the apps from memory, or you can share the screen from here. But I would say I cannot select any text over here in the like recent panel. That is a little bit weird. But you can go into the split screen mode, pin app, or just go to the freeform mode if you want to from here by just tapping on this apps icon. Let's see if the freeform actually works. So yeah, this actually works as you can see, pretty cool in my opinion. Now let's talk about the stock camera. Well, the stock camera here is a little bit disappointing again for me because this is a Snapdragon kind of camera. And yes, it takes basic pictures and there are a couple of options. Like you can switch to the front camera and stuff and this is how the front camera interface looks like. Not that great maybe and there is a QR code scanner, video mode and stuff. And in the video mode of the stock camera, there is the video quality of like 4K UHD up to and we have the other things like focus mode and stuff you can change that so yeah you get the snapdragon camera it works fine normally so no issues with that so that's the reason why i have installed a couple of google cameras like this and if you want to install them you will get the links for them in the cards and night set and stuff with the google camera is also working fine no issues with that and again if you want to install a next camera because this rom does not have really good like kind of stock camera interface you can definitely check out that card right there to install a next camera i have explained everything about a next camera over there in that video now talking about the daily driving performance they should be good enough and yes even though some oss vendor based roms performs really good better than some ui vendor based roms but here i have not faced any issues over here in terms of performance and I would say the performance of this ROM is still great even though this is a MIUI vendor based ROM. You can see the benchmarks from here and this ROM performs really well. I have not faced any kind of lags or stutters but sometimes I have noticed some brightness flickering. Let me show you one more time and I'll slow it down so that you guys can notice it. Did you just notice that? So yeah that kind of flickering I'm talking about but yes it is not a big issue very minor issue that I have faced. So thank you so much for watching this video guys on the Havoc OS 4.4 on the Redmi K20 Pro. Let me in the comments what do you guys think and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Shiro from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.